Welcome to this introduction to Spongy Moth in Indiana and the Spongy Moth Slow the Spread program. This presentation is brought to you by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources Division of Entomology and Plant Pathology. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge our partners who make this program possible. The Indiana DNR Division of Forestry, USDA APHIS, U.S. Forest Service, Purdue University, and Purdue Extension. In this presentation, we will introduce you to spongy moth, talk about its life stages, and outline what makes it such a destructive forest pest. Then we will discuss how we survey for this insect and what options we have to manage their populations when we find them. So what is spongy moth? Spongy moth, scientific name, Lymantria despar despar, formerly known as gypsy moth, is an insect in the Lepidopter order, that is, moths and butterflies. It is originally from Europe and was accidentally introduced near Boston in the late 1860s. By 1890, spongy moth was causing widespread defoliation in that area and has gone on to become one of North America's most devastating forest pests. Today, spongy moth can be found across the Northeast and Midwest states and in several Canadian provinces. The dark blue and dark orange areas are generally infested with spongy moth. The light green areas are action zones where spongy moths are actively managed by the Slow the Spread program. Occasionally, spongy moth is found in the tan areas. These sites become a high priority for eradication in order to slow the progression of this insect across the country. This map of 2022 moth catches demonstrates the distribution of spongy moth in Indiana. While spongy moth is occasionally found in southern Indiana counties, they are strongly established in northern Indiana. Now that we know a little bit about where spongy moth came from, let's talk about its biology. Spongy moth has a typical moth life cycle with four distinct stages, eggs, larva or caterpillar, pupa, and adult. Let's look at each stage a little closer. Of the year-long life cycle, eight to nine months are spent as an egg within the protection of the egg mass. Egg masses are laid in late summer and are present through the winter and into the early spring. Each female can lay only one egg mass, but each egg mass can contain 500 to 1,000 individual eggs. Egg masses are about one to two inches in length and vary from dark rust to light tan in color. The velvet appearance comes from a top covering of the female's body hairs. Females seek out protected areas to lay egg masses. They can be laid on any available surface, including trees, vehicles, furniture, and other outdoor items. Emergence will vary depending on how warm or cold the spring is, but sometime around April 25th, quarter inch long caterpillars will hatch out of the eggs. These caterpillars will soon move into the tree canopy to feed. When the caterpillars are in crowded conditions, they will go through a process called ballooning. Caterpillars spin a silken thread that they will then ride in the wind in order to spread to less crowded areas to colonize new trees. In these pictures, the spongy moth caterpillar is hanging from a single thread hoping to catch a ride to a new area. Spongy moth caterpillars do not make web nests. The caterpillars are covered in coarse hairs. As they mature, spongy moth caterpillars develop a characteristic marking, five pairs of blue dots and six pairs of red dots along their back. They can reach up to three inches in length. In June, after about two months of feeding, the caterpillars will go into a resting or pupal stage where they will develop into adults. They are in this stage for about 14 to 17 days. Adult males will begin to emerge from their pupil casing in late June, with the females emerging a few days later. Females are flightless, so to attract a male, they release a scent or pheromone for the males to follow. The males have feathery antenna that allow them to sense or smell the scent of the female. Both sexes have characteristic chevron patterns or an arrow pointing to a dot on their wings. This marking is much less obvious on the darker colored males than on the white females. Let's look at some of the qualities of spongy moth that make it so devastating. We've already talked about how caterpillars can ride on wing currents to find new feeding grounds. While natural ballooning may move caterpillars a few miles, 
Artificial spread can take this insect across states, countries, or even across continents. This is due to the propensity for egg masses to be laid on objects moved by people, enabling spread into new areas, often undetected. As you can see in these pictures, egg masses can hide almost anywhere, under picnic tables, in pipes, or on anything left outdoors. This habit of laying egg masses anywhere makes it very important for those living in spongy moth areas to inspect anything left outdoors prior to moving it. Vehicles, trailers, and campers also provide plenty of sheltered places for an egg mass to hide. Plus, their mobility provides an easy means for spongy moth to find its way into new habitats and regions. Another reason why spongy moth is so devastating is because it will feed on over 500 different species of plants. While it strongly prefers oaks, it is a generalist and will feed on a wide range of plants found throughout Indiana. If it can't find an oak or other preferred host, it will find something to feed on. Just because it's not a favorite food does not mean it will not be consumed. It's hard to imagine that a caterpillar can cause so much damage, but they're voracious feeders. At maturity, a single caterpillar can eat one square foot of foliage every 24 hours and can consume up to 11 square feet of leaf tissue in its lifetime. With over 500 eggs laid by each female, spongy moth populations can grow quickly. And when populations are large, defoliation can happen rapidly. This picture is from Snowshoe, Pennsylvania in July 2007. The tan areas are large swaths where spongy moth has stripped the tree canopy of leaves. Given their potential to spread, ability to exponentially increase in numbers, a wide host range, and the amount of foliage consumed, it's no wonder that spongy moth is a threat to defoliate thousands of acres of rural and urban forest around the U.S. every year. But what does that defoliation do to the trees? Losing leaves takes away a tree's ability to store food and puts it under stress. Because this defoliation happens earlier in the year, most trees can put on a second flush of leaves. But doing so uses up reserve energy and makes the tree susceptible to environmental stress like droughts, diseases, and other pests. Two to three years of defoliation in a row can kill a mature tree. Spongy moth also has economic impacts. Trees play a critical role in our communities. When spongy moth kills trees, it changes how our neighborhoods feel, look, and sound. Additionally, property owners are responsible for the cost associated with tree removal and replacement, as well as the liability associated with falling limbs and trees. Spongy moth also has the potential to affect the health and wellness of a community. A very small percentage of people are sensitive to the hairs of the spongy moth caterpillar. When people come into contact with these hairs, either when the hairs break off and become airborne or by touching or being touched by the caterpillar, a rash similar to that caused by poison ivy can develop. In very high populations, spongy moth can make outdoor activities unpleasant as well. Caterpillars in their excrement may be falling from the trees and covering sidewalks, picnic tables, and other surfaces, reducing the allure of backyards, parks, pools, and other outdoor recreational facilities. To figure out how to manage spongy moth, we have to know where it is, and that means conducting a survey. The Slow the Spread or STS project is a cooperative program managed by the U.S. Forest Service. The STS program is conducted in cooperation with the states along the leading edge of the spongy moth infestation. Much of the survey work for spongy moth is conducted in this area. To monitor spongy moth populations, pheromone traps are placed in grids throughout the STS area. Remember, females don't fly. The pheromone in the trap mimics the female to attract and capture male moths and show us where populations are, where populations are increasing, and how effective previous treatments have been. The overall goal of the Slow the Spread project is to limit the spread of this pest so natural enemies can catch up with the leading edge of the infestation and help keep populations from becoming damaging. Mammals, such as this squirrel, take time to adapt to potential new food sources. 
Meanwhile, pathogens and parasitoids take time to move into new areas and become effective controls of spongy moth populations. Spongy moth will never be eradicated from Indiana, but we can and do manage the rate at which it moves through the state. One of the ways we manage for spongy moth is through various treatment options. If a population is too far behind the SDS zone or is already showing pressure from natural enemies, doing nothing may be an appropriate action. In some cases, we might have trap catches but are unable to locate the spongy moth population. A heavier grid of traps may be placed in these areas to help provide more information. When spongy moth populations are found in very limited areas, a ground treatment might be used. This can consist of mass placement of survey traps, spraying egg masses with oil, or treating single trees on a site. Finally, we can use aircraft to put applications over larger areas. There are four different options for aerial treatments. We'll look at each in turn. Nucleopolyhedrosis virus, or NPV, is a naturally occurring virus that is very specific to spongy moth caterpillars. The virus causes breakdown of internal tissues and death of the insect. The product, called GYPCHEC, is in very limited supply and is typically used in sites where threatened and endangered moths and butterflies occur and may be affected by other treatment options. Caterpillars grow by shedding their skin in a process called molting. Insect growth regulators are insect hormones that interfere with the normal molting process, resulting in the insect's death. Mimic and Dimelin have reentry requirements and other restrictions that limit them to use in specific circumstances. They would typically be used where the DNR can control access to the treatment areas, state and federal lands, or areas with a handful of closely cooperating landowners, for example. Mating disruption, or MD as we often call it, is used in very low spongy moth populations. It is applied over tree canopies in a single application, typically in June. Mating disruption does not actually kill living organisms. It reduces future spongy moth populations by decreasing the chance of mating. The female spongy moth cannot fly. She releases pheromones to attract a male to her. The large amount of female pheromones spread by aircraft overwhelms the male sensory equipment, making them have great difficulty finding the females. Many males die of exhaustion before they encounter a living female moth. Unmated females do not lay viable egg masses, thus reducing future generations. The product Splat GM Organic is used for mating disruption. The female pheromone is infused into a waxy biodegradable carrier made from food grade materials. This formulation specifically affects spongy moth and has no effect on other insects or wildlife. The application rate is about 1.6 ounces per acre. That's equivalent to about three tablespoons spread over a football field. The final aerial application product is Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Christaki, or BTK for short. This product is usually selected when populations are a little higher or are in outlier populations. It is usually applied in early May with a second treatment four to 10 days later. Occasionally, BTK is applied as a single treatment when used in conjunction with a mating disruption treatment. BTK is a naturally occurring soil-borne bacterium. It only affects moth and butterfly caterpillars and it must be ingested to kill them. It is harmless to non-target species like people, other mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Having been in commercial use since 1958, BTK has an extensive and long-term safety record. The BTK product we use is called 4A76B. It's applied at a rate of about 42 ounces per acre, which is a bit less than a two liter bottle of product over a football field. 4A settles on the foliage and dries within 20 to 60 minutes after application. BTK is also sensitive to sunlight and heat and will only persist in the environment for three to seven days. Aerial applications are highly weather dependent. Rain, wind, or low clouds may result in a treatment being delayed. The day of treatments, a crop duster will fly over the treatment area. These planes fly low and are loud. Treatments 
usually occur in the early morning, but can occur any time during the day when weather is suitable. Even though pilots may fly over open fields and lakes, they have the ability to turn sprayers off so that product is only applied where it will be effective. The Indiana DNR and U.S. Forest Service take the safety of aerial applications very seriously. Material is secured before, during, and after the operation. Access to facilities and aircraft are restricted and monitored. DNR staff monitor operations at the sites, at the airport, and through GPS tracking of the aircraft. More information about our proposed treatments, including maps, product labels, fact sheets, and contact information can be found on our website at onon.in.gov slash spongymoth, one word. If you have any questions or comments about our spongy moth program and proposed treatment sites, we would love to hear from you. Please feel free to write, call, fax, or email. Again, you can find much more information about our treatment projects on the web at on.in.gov slash spongymoth. The Indiana DNR thanks you very much for your time today.